Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, got a little job we're going to be working on today, and I'm doing this for a viewer. This is uh, from Kevin Septino, who's up in New York. Contacted me, asked if I could help him out. Um, he needed a gear like this one right here. I don't remember the exact story. I think this fits on a lathe that he has, and uh, he was missing a gear. He actually had one, but he needs another one and uh, need to replicate this. Now, he asked me if I can make a new one. I said, sure, I can. But before we go to the trouble and expense of doing that, let's see if we can find a suitable one that's already done. So uh, I actually helped him out, did a little bit of research, and we were able to find this one here from Boston Gear. This is a 90 tooth uh, gear. Um, I don't remember the pitch. I want to say it's 16 or 18. I can't remember, but it's irrelevant. Uh, but anyway, he was able to find a gear, same diameter, same number of teeth, same gear pitch. It is just a little bit thinner than the original gear, but not by much. And it's going to work just fine for uh, what he needs. I say thinner, the gear part's thinner. However, it still needs some modification in that the hub down here, the thickness is a little bit too thick and the hole is a little bit on the small side. I think this is half inch. It needs to be nine sixteenths and have a key in it. Um, and it needs to be thinned down. So that's what we're going to be doing today is a uh, doing some modifications to a cast iron Boston gear to make it work in his application. And uh, we're gonna be getting our rivet lathe set up to do the turning. And first things first is I need to uh, turn my jaws around to grab this, it's a little bit large. So um, these are reversible jaws. You take them off, flip them over, and you can get a much larger diameter grip pattern. So uh, let's get in here and take those off. So we just got some socket cap screws in here, two of them on each one, and uh, take these off. That lets you uh, knock this uh, little jaw off and that is a tight fit there we go and it's they're reversible so we'll just flip it over and put it back on we'll do that on all three of them long screw goes in the top short one in the bottom though Had to go to the inside jaw when you clamped them all in it was too small to fit in the outside ones anyway we got it in there now normally when i do gears um, what i will do is i will put a little gauge pin or something in between a couple of these teeth to give it something to, to hold on to but because of this is a fairly fine pitch and because it's matching the radius this in my jaw pretty good. I've got plenty of teeth in contact there, so I think I'm just gonna go with it like it is. And looks like it's running pretty true, at least on the inside bore, which is what matters. Of course, this is a cast part, so it's a little bit of run out there, but what's important is it's running true machine. So what I need to do now is we need to make this a little bit thinner. And let me get some measurements, figure out what we need to go down to, and we'll get started on that. So I've got my 12 inch calipers out here because they are long enough to reach down over this. My six inch calipers won't quite do that. And we're about 866, uh, 866 thousand. So 875 would be seven eighths. So that looks like what they were shooting for there. And what we we're wanting is about it's about 455, so probably 450 is what they were shooting for. Uh, and I just need to take that hub down. I'm using my little poor man's DRO here. I got a dial indicator with a magnet on it. I'll stick this to the carriage and I can measure how far in I'm coming um, with the, the cutter as we're cutting. So um, we can keep track of what we're doing. In here and make sure I got clearance. Looks like I do. There, 
your touch off. I'll touch off my dial in, zero out my dial indicator. Just bring it in about 50 thou. And we'll just face across that. Another 50, that'll make a hundred thou total. Just double check my measurements. Okay, we're at six fifteen roughly. So we got a little over 150 more thousand to go. final measurement here and we'll dial this last little bit in so it looks like I've got 13 thou to come off so we'll move over move in 13 thou and we should be right on the money Should have our um, thickness correct. And we're right on the number. All right, I got a 9 16 inch drill bit in here. And we're just going to go ahead and enlarge this hole on up to size. So now, I need to put a keyway in there. Let's move, make sure I got a brooch pushing the right size and we'll get that knocked out. Well, we're gonna have to hold off a little bit on the broaching job. I don't have a 9 16 inch brooch bushing. I could make one, but they're only about 12, 13 bucks. I just ordered one from McMaster car. They should be in here. Uh, in a day or two and we'll get the broaching done. But in the meantime, I do also need to put a set screw in here. And uh, the original had a set screw, that little quarter 20 set screw. And because of the way the gear is, they actually tilted the gear so the set screw goes in at a little bit of an angle. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna put a spacer. This is just a piece of, what is that? 3 8 inch uh, tool steel back here in the back behind the cutter or behind the gear and I'm gonna lay my gear in here and then I got another piece of uh, tool steel here that we'll put on the front and we'll just clamp this together and that should get us a nice little angle that I can come in here now and have clearance to drill my hole. But before I drill the hole, I do need to get a little uh, flat spot in there. So I've got a uh, end mill here. This is just a uh, quarter inch end mill. And I'm just gonna go down and basically mill in there until I get a flat that I can get a drill started on. And then we'll drill it out, so. 
I'm just gonna raise my table up. You know what? It needs to go over just a little bit. That's pretty close right there. Not quite. All right, I got a flat down there now that I can uh, drill into. Got a number seven drill bit in here for drilling a, uh, or for tapping a quarter 20 hole. And there we go. Look around in my box, I found one of these uh, pulley taps. Pulley tap is a uh, long reach tap made for tapping down inside of a something like a pulley. Uh, this isn't really a pulley, but something similar. Slow that way down. And we're just gonna power tap it here on the mill. Much, much better. Let's just... Uh, let that feed down through there. I'm just letting that feed down by itself. Once we get through, I'll reverse it and we'll back it out. I'm not applying any pressure on the tap. I'm just letting it, uh, I applied a little bit of pressure to get it started, but after that, you just let the uh, threads pull it on down and through when you're power tapping. And I think we got that done. So we'll wait for our broach pushing to get in and uh, finish this job up. I had to wait a couple of days for this to come in, but I've got my broach bushing now that fits this 9 16 inch hole. My set uh, had a half inch and 5 8 but didn't have a 9 16 So uh, no big deal. Just ordered one of those. And uh, to broach this, of course, we'll just use a standard brooch here and we're over on the uh, arbor press. I will note that on the original, the set screw is up here and it's offset 90 degrees. I'm gonna do it just back like, back like it was. Just kind of line that up by eye. And I'll bring my press down. And I'm going to put a little oil on this. And we'll run that brooch through there. It just cuts a tooth at a time and uh, nibbles it out. I don't like the way that's bending. Turn it this way. There it goes. Oh, I see the problem. I'm at the bottom of my stroke. I need to raise my table up. I was wondering why won't it go any farther? Let's try that. There it goes. 
All right, so this brooch requires a second go through and there's a shim that you put behind it. And we'll just uh, run right back down that same slide again and it'll take it a little bit deeper. The original broaching is deeper. I don't know, it's deeper than a standard one. And I've got a thicker shim, so I think I'm just gonna run another pass down through here. I don't know that they, he needs that extra depth on there, but uh, trying to make it like the original one. So this is just a different shim behind it. This is a little bit thicker. It's actually for a different broach, but uh, it's gonna give us, it's gonna make that slot just a little bit deeper than what we got now and make it more like the original. There we go. And let's see what we got here. So that's got that key in there. The other one's still just a little bit deeper than that, but that's as deep as I'm going. That should be plenty deep enough. Well, that's gonna be a wrap, I believe. We've got our part all finished up. This is ready to go back to Kevin. I'm gonna get it wrapped up, packaged up, and back in the mail to him today. And uh, that's gonna pretty much be a wrap on the video. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comments are appreciated, and we'll catch you on the next video.